Hello, everyone. Um, I had some requests um, about figuring out how to distinguish uh, sounds in Bonk. So the main request I had um, was regarding one of the final project ideas, which was to have some music playing um, or some sound playing, and then to have that sound change with the clap. But then the question was, well, how does one uh, stop the music from generating um, the triggers in Bonk? Uh, so that's a really good question. There are a couple of ways of doing it. Either you could separate the speakers out from the microphone and things like that. But there is also a function in Bonk um, in Pure Data, uh, which lets you teach the object um, to listen out for certain sounds. So you can teach it to listen to uh, a clap, um, which means uh, it can theoretically in, um, ignore other sounds. Now, that's a really nice thing, and it's also quite a fun thing in terms of um, making an instrument or making some software that can play different sounds according to, in response to different types of inputs, so claps versus um, tapping a coffee mug or versus hitting the table or something like that. So I'm going to show you how to do all that, um, and hopefully that will be useful and interesting and fun. So we're going to start with using the bunk object. Um, and just like we did last time, the first thing we can do is just hook up our audio input to it. So ADC um, tilde being the audio input. I've got a microphone right here. Um, so mine's a separate microphone, but any, it would it will automatically default to your microphone. Um, uh, as usual, you check and make sure your DSP is switched on. Um, and you check your audio settings to make sure everything is up to uh, up to where you want it to be. Now, um, right away, whenever I use bonk, I tend to just set up immediately that min minimum velocity kind of threshold thing that we talked about last time. Um, and I tend to just put a nice big slider on it. So this time I'm going to make uh, the slider a bit bigger so we can see it better. Um, and as we talked about last time, the output range of this slider defaults to 0 to 127 which happens to be just about right in my opinion. Uh, so I'm going to come out of edit mode. I'm going to bring my slider up to around here. Um, and then I'll attach a bang to the output immediately. So we can just make sure everything's working. Um, theoretically, once I connect this and I start making some noise, yeah, there we go. So that means when I clap and occasionally talk, the volume is going louder roughly than where this um, this slider is currently set. If I bring it down really low, it'll be flashing constantly with my voice, which is kind of mesmerizing. Or I bring it up higher, and it just only responds to loud noises. Great. So that's a good start. Now, um, to teach it how to use different sounds, uh, how to listen out for different sounds, you use a message, which is called learn. Um, so a message box, you type learn, and then you tell, give it a number. Now, what that number is 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 it's telling it how many sounds you're going to make, how many instances of that sound you're going to make when you're teaching it. The documentation suggests to use 10, which is usually fine with me. Um, it's worked fine for me anyway. Um, and then the second message you need to send it when you're teaching it is learn zero. And that will mean that uh, it's uh, that you're, you're teaching. Learning mode is over, right? It just tells you, like, okay, that's it. You're telling the object that you're you're done teaching it. Um, the last thing it tells you in the documentation to use is this debounce zero or debounce message with an argument of zero is the default, I think. Uh, certainly, zero works fine for me. Um, what this is like a slightly advanced thing, it's telling you how long. Uh, bonk should list should wait in between each um, sound. I find zero works fine, uh, so I usually make the uh, make the message, attach a load bang to it, so I don't need to think about it later, and then click it once, and then that seems to do the job for me. So um, now, just to make our learning slightly easier, uh, I'm going to make a toggle here, uh, so that way, um, whoops. There we go. Um, this toggle will let me um, uh, s 
switch on learn mode and off, switch learn mode on and off a bit more easily than clicking on this message box, making 10 things or 10 or 20 or 30 sounds and then clicking on learn. I prefer to just have a single object. It's a bit clearer to tell me where I am. Um, so I've made a toggle box that I'm connecting to here. There's a few different ways you could do this, but I'm going to use select one and zero. Um, you'll remember that just to show you the way a toggle works, which you can find up here, or shift command T. When you click it, it jumps between zero and one. So quite a handy little visual thing to have. When I click it on, it'll send a one and that will enter us into learn mode. And when I turn it off, it will bang this message box, turn and set learn mode to zero, which means it's off. So quite a handy method for teaching it. Um, that's pretty much how we set up our learn mode. The last thing we're going to do is um, just give us a little something to look at eventually, which we'll need further down the line. So out of the right outlet of bunk, you can attach an object called unpack float float ff. Um, that's because there's a list of numbers coming out of here. Uh, so we're going to have two number boxes here, just so that we can see. Um, and that will start working right away. You can see um, what that 187.3 represents is the volume or the velocity. So if I clap harder, it goes higher up. And if I just, uh, so it will only give me the number uh, numbers if the volume goes above where I've set this minimum velocity. So I would guess that this minimum velocity is probably around 60 or something now, ah, 57. Yeah, so it's not going below. 57 is the lowest I've seen so far. Um, and right now, this is all just sending out zeros. That's because it hasn't learned to distinguish. Now, when we start distinguishing different sounds, this number will change. And that's how we'll use them to trigger different things. So when we enter learn mode, I'm going to make 10 sounds from each of the different objects that I want it to hear and distinguish. I'll do 10 claps to start, then, uh, I don't know. yeah, there I'll tap my mug 10 times, and then I'll tap this box. So I am picked those three things because I think they sound quite different. Um, we'll see. Uh, so I'll do 10 of each, then I'll turn off learn mode, and hopefully we'll have three different things. Okay, so a few things there. You might have seen that as I changed the sounds, this went up. Um, now, that was because it heard 10 things, so it's quite useful to have this bang to look at um, because you can make sure that each one that you've, uh, that you've, each sound that you've made has triggered. Um, and if I remember right, clap, yeah, clap was the first one I made, then tapping on my mug, and this switched from zero to one. And then when I started using the box, it switched from one to two. So that means my clap will be zero. So I can use another select object down here to split them out. So I'll have clap for zero, mug for one, and box for two. And I'll just duplicate my bangs here. And you should see three different things. Whoops, three different uh, bangs light up for the three different sounds that I make. Nice. Let's see if my mug works. Yeah. And then box. Cool. Okay. So um, now, uh, just to um, give this a little bit of kind of sonic uh, interest to show a proof of concept of what you can do to make this interesting. Um, I'm just going to trigger three different sounds with these three different bangs in um, 
the stupidest, simplest way imaginable. Uh, so first, I need to save my patch. Uh, here we go. So I'll save it in here. Uh, bonk, learn. Um, and um, I've got a folder in here in my bonk learn called sounds. Uh, so that makes things a little easier. Um, so for each one of these bangs, I'll have them trigger more bangs, right? So I'll have a bang um, that will then, when this gets a bang, it will trigger two bangs in a row, first out the right, then out the left. Um, so at the first one, we'll have open sounds uh, gun dot wave sound of the one o'clock gun in Edinburgh, and then um, a message with the number one in it. Um, and these will go to the read sf tilde object, which is just the stupidest, simplest sound playing object in um, in pure data. And those will go out my output. Okay, cool. So I've got that. Okay. So that's me just testing it manually. I'll just do three of these. And I'll just change the sound. Ah, ah, lost in the key commands. There we go. One, two, three. So symbol is another one. And drum. Connect those to my three bangs. So if I trigger them manually, you'll hear the difference. Cool. So just to reiterate, <laughs> I'm going to bring my velocity up while I talk. Just to reiterate, um, I've made three different sounds here. They're going to, when I trigger the three different sounds, I've, I've taught bonk three different sounds. Those three different sounds have been assigned numbers sequentially, zero, one, and two. So let's select zero, one, and two. It's doing is listening for this number, which is telling me which sound has been played, has been heard. That splits 0, 1, and 2 out these three outlets of my select object. They each go to three separate bangs just to show me that for, for um, uh, sort of bug fixing. Um, that bang then goes over to here. In each one of these instances, it triggers two bangs. The first bang opens the sound file, and the second bang plays it. Um, and this is purely because we're just using this basic read SF um, tilde object. Now, if I bring my velocity down, when I clap, it should play the gun sound. When I tap my mug, it should play the cymbal sound. And when I uh, open and close the box, it should play the drum sound. So you can tell um, it, there, are, there are a few false triggers. Um, I think a lot of those false triggers are just like extra little noises that I'm making, right? Like it's like extra funny little things. Like when I put scissors down on the table, it seems to sound quite similar to Bonk as the box for some reason, um, things like that. But uh, really, if you do all that, if you do the learning and then kind of adjust your minimum velocity, you should probably be able to figure out um, what kind of settings are working for you. Now, what you can do as well, which is quite handy, is you can save all these settings as a text file. Um, and the way to do that is you use the write message. And um, you can just call it write, uh, like, uh, I don't know, clap mug underscore box dot text. OK. So if I send that to Bonk, um, after I've done everything, I've just clicked right. It will create a, sound, a text file in here. Uh, there it is, with a bunch of numbers, which I guess represent the spectrum or something of the sounds that have been made. Uh, so clap mug box. And then what you can have is a second one that says read clap mug 
box.text. And now that you've made that already, you can stick a load bang up message on that. And theoretically, you don't need to learn it anymore, right? I can close the patch, uh, bring up my velocity. <laughs> I'm going to put a load bang on there as well of, uh, I don't know, 60, 70, let's say 70. Um, in here, there's another ways of doing that, but I'll, uh, that's the nicest kind of visual way to show what's happening. Okay, let's try that one more time. Open it, and now, theoretically, <laughs> the first one was false positive, but So what the things that are funny is that like it's clearly not working as well when I get closer to the mic. So it, I guess I taught it from my hands back here and that probably is making a big difference. But otherwise it's working pretty well. I'd say it has like a sort of, right now a sort of 80% uh, success rate, maybe a little higher. I would guess um, if you make this learn bigger, uh, it might be better, um, might be better quality. So if you learned it, 20 times or 30 times, like it would probably get more and more accurate, but I'll leave you to explore with that. Um, of course, if you relearn again and you write and you click this box uh, again, once you've learned, um, then it will, uh, it, will, um, it will overwrite it. You could even, if you wanted, take the, this output from here, select one zero. So when you're finished learning, you could pop that into this inlet on your message to write that text file and it'll automatically overwrite it. So you're uh, be maybe a little careful with that because it'll do it automatically, but um, that might be quite a useful thing uh, to have to just automate the whole system. Um, that's everything for learning, I think. So in my next one, I think I'll look into uh, playing back sound files in more interesting ways. Um, but obviously let me know if you have other things, other topics you'd rather I discuss. Okay, thanks. Enjoy.